Hi, I'm Sherry. Welcome to my channel, Sherry Jones Designs, where we take castaway clothing and things like that and make fun and useful things out of them. So today I want to talk to you about something I've seen in my comment section. It's not bad, don't worry. <laughs> if something's bad or negative, I I just I pretend it's not there and and I just go on with life. I'm too old to to be bothered by everything, right? Don't have time for it. Don't have energy for it. Man, when I was younger, a good fight was a thing I looked for. When I get older, they are avoided like the plague. So, okay, that was not on today's subject. But today's subject that I want to talk to you about is some of the best ways that you found that I've found to make a men's, um, you know, dress shirt to look more feminine, to, to be able to use it in upcycles. I'm going to share some of the techniques that I use and I would love to hear from you guys some of the techniques that you use and also to remind you that I have a free discord the link will be in the description below that if you have some pictures of things you want to share that you do or you just want to share things that you make feel free to go over there and join the community and post pics of an or comment or whatever you know uh i'm i'm very inspired over there i'm like well i've already got ideas from things being posted there so i appreciate everybody who goes over there and shares all right so let's get on to some of the techniques that i use okay so men's shirts are so plentiful like you can you can find them all over and you know, buy them in lots and stuff on eBay, different places. And so the reason I tend to gravitate towards them is they're largely made of cotton, which is a lovely fabric. One of the favorites, of, actually in the poll, it's the favorite fabric. And it's, you know, probably mine too, although I do wear knit the most, I admit it. But my favorite feel is cotton or linen. So here you have so much fabric in a shirt and so much potential here but how do you take this men's shirt and make it more feminine some of the ways i use to me the the cuffs and the collars are my first things i i notice plus there is no form fitting now depending on your build um there's my dog sorry about that guys she is noisy she's a great pyrenees she has a big bark, so even with my windows closed, I can hear her. But, okay, so so to me, this, this is very masculine-type collar looking, and then the squareness of the build. So you either have to give it, to make it more feminine, you need some angles cut into it. You're going to need, if you want form-fitting for a bust, you'd have to do darts. You know, there's a lot of, lot of different things you could do. I usually don't go down that... Go, don't go down that method. What I usually do, uh, several things, I, I remove the cuffs. And then I will, which I'm going to go ahead and do to this one and show you. And one thing to keep in mind is that most of the time, removing the cuffs does not make the sleeve too short because men's arms are longer than women's. And so they've actually, the sleeves are longer. Like if I took a women's shirt which we could do that and lay it on here. This is a large, um, let's see here, let's see if I can find a long sleeve. Okay, here's a women's. All right, so here we are from shoulder to shoulder. Okay, see, so what I do is I will remove the cuff and just hem it here. Then come back about this far. And we'll just go ahead and do it here. I'm going to make a tunic with this shirt. It has unusual colors in it. And it doesn't seem to matter if you have a masculine color. Because once you add the feminine touches to it, it looks fine. You know, it just it looks fine. So I remove my cuffs. And then... I open it up like this and I will hem this 
turn it over. So I have a hem here, a little bit of a hem. Let's see how, I'm, I'll probably search the edge and flip it once, but you could do two, try, do a little handkerchief hem on it. And then I will put an elastic in it and I will sew it up so that I have a little flounce like that. So then you have immediate, which we'll just go ahead and do to that one. You'll have immediate uh, feminine look to it. Now, if you want the sleeves to be longer, what I do, you, you, you say, well, I think that'll be too short for me. And you like the length of the sleeve. Well, then go ahead and cut and remove your cuff. And what you're going to do is just add a piece of fabric. Let's say what you're going to use with this was a floral print or, or, or a contrasting print. You can just add that piece of fabric here and then do exactly what I did. That's that's one way I sell. I mean, one of the things I do that I sell. So I'll add a piece of fabric here and then I'll hem the end of it and then gather it so then you have this cute little different color here at the end. So, which we could do, I'll have to find a fabric that goes with that. Do that as well. And then the next thing I do that will make it more feminine is this collar. I will take button it and you have to be careful in removing these sometimes it will leave a hole because of it's pulled on a lot you know a collar is uh, the collar being washed you know it's left buttoned so there actually will be a hole there but there are two different two or three different stages here you can do with the collar one which we'll do the first one is just to remove this part of the collar and I'll show you the difference in just removing this one. It um, it automatically makes it seem, uh, to me anyways, less masculine and less serious. Like it's more of a casual shirt now. Now it's more casual. And I'd remove these two buttons. Okay, the next one I do, which I'm going to do with this one, is I remove the rest of the collar and I go ahead and trim it even though I'm going to trim it out a little bit wider because I use these for straps and stuff I'm hoping to do a project with them I have so many of these I'm going to try to see if I can figure out a project to make with them all right and then you'll have something like this. But to me, that's still a little tight, like for my neck. So I'll come out here and trim it another good, um, maybe three quarters of an inch, two centimeters, if you're using centimeters. And you go all the way around. And then you're going to, I usually surge that edge, but you can zigzag it and then just turn it under once. And it gives it a very feminine touch. Another thing you can do is you can come out further into a square shape. I don't do that, but I have seen that one done, and I have seen it done where they come further out like this, and then they gather it. They put an elastic in it. I have not done that one either yet. I, here's the one I use usually my go-to, is I just come out, and I trim about this much off, but you can change this. Like, I could, I could come out further, and... I just usually follow about the same line, but you could widen it. You could go V-neck. There's a different ways that you could do this to make it more feminine. And then if you're looking for a um, sleeveless, well, then there are also other options with that as well. Okay, now when you do this one, when you do that style, you, you definitely want to remove these because you might sew them, but um, what you can do is come here, and once you turn it over, you want to make sure that these both are the same height. Like when you start, you know, turning them over, when you come back and sew back this way, make sure they end at the same height so it looks like it was designed. And if you think it looks weird to have that much space between the button, just start down lower. Uh, trim this out a little lower and come up. 
and then hem it under. And it'll hem under fine. The sharper your angles, though, the sharper your turns, the harder, uh, the harder your, like the sharper you turn here, the harder it is going to be to turn it under. So uh, remember that. And then by adding, basically adding shears, anything roughly, you know, anything like that's going to make it look more feminine. But that's the uh, the probably the the uh, easiest way I have found to make them look more feminine. Another thing you can do after you finish your collar, I could come out a little bit wider. Is you could add a, a ruffle to your collar. And that's something that would be easy to do with a piece of lace you could sew on around it. You could take, let's say, the fabric you used for the end of your sleeve here. You could use that to create uh, a ruffle around here, even a longer ruffle. Um, there's just all kinds of different ways to... What I like to do is to cut mine here, and then I will add um, kind of ruffle what's underneath it. And that gives another feminine look to it. And then I will use these strips for borders at the bottom. So it ties the top of the garment into the bottom of the garment. So, okay. I'll go ahead and remove these and and do a little bit of sewing and show you what it looks like. Oh, Rook, I want to show you this. When you have in cotton, see the holes? I don't know if you can see that. See the holes there? All you have to do sometimes is take your fingernail and rake it back and forth across it and pull the fibers back over those holes. And look, it's like magic. <laughs> it, it'll do it in the washing machine too. If, once you, uh, if you create a garment and then you wash it like that, it'll those fibers will usually close those holes. The ones that I have problems with that don't is knit products. Um, knit, knit is bad about leaving the holes I noticed so yeah so that is that's gonna be fine okay now like I said if you don't have a serger it's fine just take and um, sorry I have so many machines out I've been trying different sewing feet <laughs> I got <laughs> all my sewing machines are over here crammed together I mean, so if you don't have a serger, just use a zigzag or some sewing machines that actually have a serger stitch to them. You can do that. And I'm going to do this because this garment will be for sale in my shop. I'm going to see if I can find my, my foot here. you know this or not but uh, they do sell serger if your sewing machine has a serger looking type stitch a lot of sewing machines do they sell a foot for your sewing machine that has a cutter on it so it would literally act like a serger I guess I've never used it but I did see it I've been looking into different types of of, uh, of sewing machine feet I've been um, experimenting with which I'll do a video on um, with the uh, what is it called the dual feed feet so the walking foot or whatever I've been looking into that I found I'm discovered I'm so happy I can't actually sew knits much better with it but unfortunately I bought a cheap Chinese piece of junk <laughs> which Amazon is getting back <laughs> okay let's continue oh oh I have something to tell you guys that I did turn my camera so you can see my whole face 
I did something I've never done before. I had a dull sewing needle, just a regular sewing needle. It was really dull. And I actually sharpened it. I didn't know you could sharpen sewing needles. And I wondered if a person can do that with your your regular sewing machine needles. It took just seconds on my stone in there, just pulling it over it two or three times. And it was super sharp. I'm going to try that and with some of my sewing machine needles. And so, usually I just break them and I'm on to a new one. Because I sew over so many types of fabrics. Even using the seam jumper, I still break needles. But not as many. Probably 50% less since I learned that you can jump seams. And so I'm going to try it with a sewing machine needle. See if I can actually do it. And if I can, I'll let you guys know. So let's do this one. Now, it's easier to get the elastic in it for me. You can do it two ways. You can sew it shut. Let's just do it that way first. Um, and then put the elastic in or you can put the elastic in first and then it's a little tricky sometimes um, because you're working inside the cuff so putting the elastic in can be tricky either way I'm trying to think how I, I spent a while since I've done one I think I do it that way I think I sew it shut first so let's try that first I've done it both ways I know that so you button it and you can pin it if you want to. You could pin it shut. And then I'm going to just make sure I have only one layer here. And I'm just going to pull it. I usually kind of slant it because um, I keep it buttoned and do like that. I make sure I just use a straight stitch. If you have a button, you can pull the button up and sew underneath it. Or you could use a narrower foot, like a zipper foot. And... And so then you have something like this. Which, if you like that look, you could actually sew some lace on this and have an open sleeve with lace or a ruffle. That would be really pretty, just to put a ruffle here. So let me grab some elastic. I usually go ahead, oh, before I do that, I'll turn this under. I usually just turn it under once because I have this surged edge. But if you didn't, you could do this. Just It'll just make it a tiny bit shorter, like that. So I'm just going to turn it once. Come on, thread. And then we're just going to straight stitch, stitch it down. If you're nervous about this, you can clip it, you can pin it, and cute that would be with just ruffle sticking out. That would be adorable. Okay, let me grab some elastic. I want to warn you guys about an elastic that I bought on Amazon too. It's like real soft. I thought, oh, that'd be perfect for my sleeves. But the moment you sew through this, it just breaks into strands. Like there's just little strands everywhere. So I don't use that where I have to sew through it lengthwise. It, it be great for masks or some other purpose like that. So what I use is just a quarter inch elastic. This is, I've made different shirts like this for myself and it's never bothered me. So it's a tougher elastic. So now I usually start where the, where the seam is at here. And if you know how much you want in there, let's say you measure and you know exactly the piece you want to put in there, you can cut that to the length. And that's what, the, this tape is good for that because I can just sit here and go, okay, I want eight inches in there. 
and and um, but what I do is I know how hard to pull on it to put it in because I've done so many to make it go in right so I'm just gonna do it the way and I have a mark here on my machine I actually just put a mark where I usually do a cuff at for the ruffle to follow I just put a little mark because I use that so frequently hey come back here so I, I just start at a seam make sure I'm, I'm on the right one here and start my elastic straight stitch still and you want your needle in there and you want to stick it down and then you're just gonna um, let's say you have an 8 inch piece you'll probably pin it on both sides and pull it as you go A gentle tug just you can just see it thin just slightly because you don't want it to squeeze your wrist I have to be careful, there's a button there. You don't want to break your needle. As long as you're close to coming back, you'd be surprised. It, it just, you know, you can, there's some variance there that you can work with, but it doesn't, you won't really notice it if you're off just a little. Okay. This is why I like the style of sewing. It is, it is, now look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Like that is so pretty. And you can do three quarter sleeves that way. You can add, you can make it three quarter. If you wanted to make the ruffle out here, you could put the elastic here and sew a ruffle on, and that would be pretty as well. So I'm going to do the other one now the same way, and then we'll we'll go to the collar and. I won't complete the whole outfit on here. I just want to talk about ways to make a top more, look more feminine. And it really is by adding curvature to it, adding frills, um, you know, little details like that. That and, and I like the way it looks to be a cross between, you know, the, the plaid with the feminine. I, I, I like the way that it looks. I don't know if because I'm girly tomboy. <laughs> Tomboy girl, not tomboy girl, but it kind of, you know, I just really like the way it looks. These are really cute with the extra fabric sewn on and to the ends and then the elastic put in. They're really cute that way too. All right, so here we have our top. And now, and, and this can be pressed to lay um, perfectly flat. So that's what it would look like. And from here you could do other things. You could, if you're not using this lower portion, you know, you could add ruffles to anything here, um, whatever. What I'm going to do, like I think this is pretty just as it is. And if you wanted this to be able to open all the way, then, you know, you could just not sew down the front at all. You could leave it like that. It's it's quite lovely already, I think. Um, I need, do need to press that. But it will lay flat and just fine once it's pressed. So now you could, let's say you wanted to do, all, another thing you could do is you could cut it. And you could d cut these and then make that a, a ruffle right here. Just, you know, if you wanted it just to be like a shirt and um, all kinds of different things you can do. What I'm going to do with this one is it will be cut off here and I'm going to add some colors into it and then this will be, use this bottom as the border. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, but I, I'm not going to do that on camera. We're just talking about ways to make it more feminine. So, um... 
there's just all kinds of different things. Like, look how cute. It would be with just a little bit of lace added under your sleeve. Like, that's adorable. Maybe I'll even do that. That's absolutely so cute. You could add it to the collar and have it up around just like that. So, just, when, you know, you'd turn that, sew it down. That would be really pretty. And I usually just sew uh, the pockets shut if I'm cutting them off here. Or I'll just leave it like that, a little tiny short pocket. It's fine. So thank you for watching, you guys. And... Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Subscribing is helpful. And also, don't forget about my Discord. And please let me know what you do that makes your men's t-shirts, or not t-shirts, but shirts, these men's shirts look more feminine. And I would love to hear it. I, I love implementing new ideas. So I look forward to what you have to say in the comments section. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And until next time, happy sewing.